There are those who dream of possibilities, of a world free of the ancient diseases that keep billions in poverty. And for those who strive to make that dream a reality, their quest is on the brink of victory. Wanaanima. <laughs> <laughs> Dear <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Each year, hundreds of thousands of women die in childbirth. Until recently, Malawi had the highest rate of maternal mortality in the world for a non-conflict country. But it has achieved a dramatic turnaround towards the global target set for 2015. This is a story about how villagers have been recruited to help get women to deliver in health facilities and the drive to improve the care at those facilities. And it all started by turning tradition upside down. Tanis Kalindi had safely delivered many babies before the woman's death. In the past, traditional birth attendants were the only help available. <laughs> Abigail Nyaka is part of changing all of that. She is a field officer for one of many organizations working with the government to save mothers and babies. Since 2007, more than 750 women's groups have been formed to galvanize rural communities to help pregnant women. 
Abigail goes from village to village to communicate a stark reality that women in Malawi who give birth in health facilities are less likely to die or lose their babies than those that don't. This is the Namilaza Task Force. They'll be coming up with the, how many pregnant women are there, how many delivered in the month, and how many went for antenatal clinic. Which place did they deliver? Is it the health facility? Was it at home? When I joined the program, deliveries were done in the communities, at home, sometimes on the road and at the traditional birth attendance. When I just started working, I experienced a neonatal death. The woman was so much in pain, she delivered, and then after delivery, the baby could not breathe, it did not even cry. They had to resuscitate that baby, but after 10 minutes, it was confirmed that the baby had died. I could feel the pain that the woman had gone through. It really touched me. When a baby dies at birth, the village women take it for immediate burial. Traditionally, men have taken no part in the birth or death of babies. <laughs> babies are even more vulnerable than their mothers at birth. Globally, over three million babies are born dead, and a further two million die in their first and only day of life. But even after that, a newborn's life remains precarious. Margaret Banda's last baby died within a week of being born. A pregnant woman is called Nzumai Wapagati. It means she's on the middle, life and death. So the mother could die or the baby also could die. They would not name the baby until the cord falls off. Because to them, it can either die or survive. So they have to be sure that this baby indeed has survived. And for them, when the cord falls off, it's a sign that this baby, chances of survival are a bit high. That's when they would name the baby. Hey, okay. Traditional birth attendants were the ones who are conducting deliveries in the communities. At one time, the government supported them. But then, after a global assessment, they discovered that most of the mothers were dying from infection, they were dying from breeding, they were dying from high blood pressure, which a traditional birth attendant could not manage to address. An experiment to train traditional birth attendants failed and the deaths continued. The reason lay in long distances between villages and health facilities. 
Poor roads, little transport and few ambulances make it impossible to get birthing mothers to skilled care in emergencies. So in order to discourage home births, the government banned the ancient institution of traditional birth attendants. Malawi's first ban on traditional birth attendants was opposed by traditionalists and overturned. But when Joyce Banda became president in 2012, she reimposed it. The president has ordered that women should only deliver with skilled help in clinics and hospitals. Today she is opening a waiting home for pregnant mothers donated by an international celebrity. When I began to wonder what was happening to fellow women, I decided that maybe the best thing I can do is to empower them. So thousands of women in this country will tell you, I'm here because Joyce Banda intervened. And when I was giving birth, I went to the hospital, and the doctor says, we have to induce. We have to induce or we'll lose the baby. I didn't know when that when your blood pressure grows, goes up, you can lose the baby. And you feel okay? Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, you okay. Finally, they induced. And I thought it was over. And then half an hour later, I just collapsed. I was bleeding to death. I got out of that hospital and I said, why did I leave? There must be a purpose. President Banda is on a mission to protect and empower women in Malawi. Yet in a strategic move, she selected a man, Chief Kwataini, to lead her initiative on safe motherhood and promoted him to senior chief. My mother experienced a prolonged labor for two consecutive days, just imagine. She was about to die. That story, you know, when she was narrating to me, I nearly burst into tears. I pledged that I will never allow any woman in my village to deliver uh, in the hands of the unskilled personnel. Across Malawi, there are still some deaths somewhere, but I'm meeting each and every chief from the central to the south to the north, east and west to make sure that all the traditional leaders in Malawi, they know their role in order to save the newborn and the pregnant woman. Chief Kwataini has the power to engineer change by stirring a massive cultural shift and he's using tradition to do it. With all those powers which have been, you know, given to the chief by the constitution of the land, I'm using those powers now to make sure that no woman delivers on the way before arrival to the health facility. These are now the Ngoni warriors. They are now passing on to say no woman should die while giving birth. 
this is the right time for the men to get involved in safe mother programs to take care of their pregnant women and escort them to the facility. Everybody respects this type of dance and everybody understands the dance quite well. This is one of the ways that have sustained the safe mother programs in my area. Uh, according to our culture, pregnancy and childbirth, they are secret issues. They thought there are witches in the communities who would want to eat the baby. You wouldn't know who exactly did it, but if you came to the hospital very early, it would be sucked away. So it's better you wait until the pregnancy shows. Chief Kwatayini introduced the idea of providing every woman in early pregnancy with a confidant, what he calls a secret mother. There are the books for our culture. These are the encyclopedias in our culture. The photo was an my many mabangira in Yomogari and Garimai Waji Sinsi, Mogari Maduga Mawa, Gurimo Funo Gamu and Delamon to Madame Mangawaki. For the first time, it was hard for a, a pregnant woman to report to the secret woman. But the women now, she goes hunting for the secret woman. This is the record book for the secret women. In, the, in all the villages, they have this secret uh, record book. They record the name of the pregnant woman, how old is she, when she got, you know, conceived, the secret women, they're the ones who follow them up, who make sure that they have reported to the facility, and they also, you know, escort the pregnant women to the facility. Another objective of the Safe Motherhood Initiative is to improve the quality of care at health facilities. But change here has not come easily. When a woman comes to the hospital, she has thrown the case to the wind, and by all means, she, she is in safe hands, and she has every reason to believe that. So, so it becomes ironical and sad if we are not able to deliver that to these women. The first day I came to this facility is, is a day I'll remember for a long time. I found a group of women and they were really painfully. The cry of those women was painful. I'll never forget that, it was PSC. And I learned later that there were many women who had actually died within the hospital when giving birth. Boila Hospital is one of the biggest maternity hospitals in Africa, with up to 70 deliveries a day. Yet Dr. Kaliti is its only full-time obstetrician with around half the nursing quota filled. Despite these obstacles, Boila has managed to more than half the number of maternal and neonatal deaths in 2013. She's fully dilated. She's a PSK. When I came in, I found a hospital that did not have any systems or any culture of improving the quality of the services that they're giving. We found a state of sort of desperation. And the message I received from this facility is that uh, this facility has been like that and you cannot change it. They said, no, we cannot afford to as long as we have open doors and women are coming with their babies. If we continued like that, we'll just end up converting this into a graveyard, and I was not ready to do that. Oh, beautiful! Beautiful! Oh, 
It's like that. Sometimes it's quiet, and then over a sudden it's like you're very busy. When you talk about improvement, it requires you to ask yourself, what can I do different? What can I do to make things a little bit better? You talk about improvement and you find resistance. We are so few. We have no resources. This hospital has been like that for, from time immemorial. This room has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight beds. But the pregnant women themselves, in a room like this, you can find between 30 and 40 women per room. It's pathetic. Yeah. We sat down and we said definitely things needed to change. We could not continue the way we are. So we ignited the passion for driving change within, within the hospital and the staff themselves. On the wall here, what we have is a chart that uh, basically represents the data of the statistics of what has been happening through this labor ward. Three years ago, in this maternity unit, by now, we had lost 56 mothers as of today. Now we are talking of nine mothers over the same period of time. So the volume has gone up. The staff have remained more or less the same, but the maternal mortality has dramatically gone down to almost a third of where we were two years ago. Midwife Caroline Mkaimba is one of the team looking after Gladys Makumba. We wanted to put up systems so that when a mother comes, it is not only when a particular person is around that they'll be able to get attention or that kind of service. And that's how the ward rounds came about, the clinical audits came about. And then there was a system that was set up so that when a mother comes, they were definitely having a continuum of care with or without individualized people being present. We continue one time to feed her. After one hour from now, if he, because if she tries to push, at least the, yeah, the baby is coming low, down. Man, yeah, the, she's quite low. Man. Is really high. Yeah, it's high, That's but now it's, it's a bit down. She's okay, contractions good, but the only problem is the head is not coming down. And the cervix is still the same. Gladys's labor is not progressing. But the systems are in place, and Caroline will check her again in an hour. Malawi had one of the highest rates of maternal mortality in the world. But over the last decade, a countrywide initiative to encourage women to receive antenatal care and to give birth in health facilities has seen some dramatic improvement. <laughs> Statistics show that in only 12 months, Dr. Kaliti and the midwives of Bwaila Hospital have managed to cut by more than half both maternal and newborn deaths. Now the pressure is on to sustain and enhance these improvements.
I used to believe that Superman was a story until I came here and then it became very real. She's crying. You have to pick up lives and put them together like in a whole 24 hour cycle. So you, you want to sleep but the reward of saving life is, is just too, is too, too strong, it's just too rewardy. The word of a chief is very powerful in Malawi. I go to a radio station, passing the message of safe motherhood, passing the message of no woman should die giving birth. Komaso ni mafuna nitogoze kwa mbili mafumu anzanga, amene achitengaso chinto chao jembele wabu inongati chao. Achitenga pa mwamba kwa mbili, chimeju pangi taguti infa ya mai indiana topano, itike kwa mbili malai muno. Mwarita ndizaso kwa mbili, kutenga utenga, kujoke la kumene uli, kukafikita kwa watu, kutela mawairesi. I heard about self-motherhood from the radios. I heard it from Chief Kwatain as well. I'm happy now to report to you that uh, the figures are going down day in and day out. The message he was telling us is that we have to implement this in our own villages so that, you know, ladies, women should follow it and men also should take part for this thing to work. When I heard about this, I say, wow, now <laughs> it's very difficult. I, I, I came to understand that, no, this is the olden days, you know, let us go with the technology of nowadays because I could believe and I still believe that it's real that those olden days we used to, to lose our lives. The Kusinha Wanji Kumini Kuonega Mu Gurulatla and Mudzimun Modzu or my kind that for the The hardest part for me to this change was for the people to understand that it is real, it is true that when you go to the hospital, the, the lady who is pregnant will deliver properly there. I was in Liban. 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 I was in The women's group in Mpanje village helps pregnant women with their many needs, including improving their diet. And the men have joined them. Men being involved in the issues of safe motherhood is what we see here. The women plus the men, they are in the garden. They are tilling the ground so that they should plant the vegetables and give the, the vegetables to the pregnant woman. So the men in this village are also taking part into this initiative because they have realized and they know that the men also should be taking part in issues of safe motherhood. A number of traditional taboos used to restrict what a pregnant woman could eat. Eggs and pork, for example, were forbidden and anemia was common. The first priority is for the women, the pregnant women. These women, they will come and then you take off the vegetables and distribute to the pregnant women in their villages. Margaret Banda, who lost her previous newborn baby at one week, has benefited from the garden.
back in Boila Hospital, Gladys's labor is still not progressing. Okay, so I'm going to form theater right. while you're preparing her. Her first baby was delivered by a traditional birth attendant at home. If she'd had the same problem then, she and the baby could have died. But even here, shortages of vital resources could still put her life at risk. You're talking about supplies for drugs, supplies for doing operations, or even ambulances just to take patients to hospital. The resources are big, a big, big challenge across the board. I can remember only one day while well, my day was bad. I rush to the laboratory to get blood. There is no blood. What could I do? No, it's like I'm now in a dilemma. What should I do? What if I take this woman to theater and there is no blood? The theater people will say, no, we can't operate on this woman. No blood. So it's, now that part is about resources. For the majority of the maternal deaths that occur, anemia of lack of blood is associated in almost 7 out of 10 of those cases. When you have such cases, then you have a few minutes to save that life, and one of the critical things we'll anchor on to do that will be blood. But in a situation where we don't have blood in our bank, we ask the relatives to donate. Now we have a patient from the female ward, uh, this patient has got a hemoglobin of 2.4, which is very critical. The challenge is that we do not have sufficient blood to be able to sustain the volume of work that we have. And most of the time you find mothers who have to stay on, and basically you have to manage until when the next drop of blood is available. <laughs> it's very disappointing to go around the whole country mobilizing all the community to go to the facility and yet some other drugs are also uh, not found at that facility. In theater, Gladys's cesarean is going smoothly. Her decision to deliver in a hospital may well have saved her life. people they don't have anything they are just precious so there are to go on and any budget to go on i mean the maria i mean i need my twins Okay. Mm -hmm. Chabuina. Abadwa ah, twins amene. Abadwa twins amene Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Twins. They were considered to be something very abnormal. So they would let them stay in the bush. Maybe for a month we are scored, but with uh, interventions on the community maternal newborn care, people are coming to realize that that was being cruel. And now these babies are being cared within the communities. Evelyn trains health assistants in low-cost care that can dramatically improve the survival of babies after birth. Mm. 
Traditionally, people were putting debt on the umbilical cord. To them, it was like medicine to help heal the cord stamp. But we know very well the cord stamp is direct entry of germs into the bloodstream. So that would end up in tetanus or other infections. In Boila Hospital, the commitment that no woman should die while giving birth is often tested, especially when there are delays in their getting to the hospital. Every death is understood as a system's failure and is often taken personally. When a mother dies, we have to actually look back, like what happened? Why did that mother die? Where was I like mistaken or where was I wrong? What could I have d done to make that woman be alive up to now? If a facility is experiencing a number of maternal deaths or neonatal deaths, and you try to sweep that under the carpet, then what we are saying in short, you are actually killing those women who will come later. Because as sad as these developments are, it is not an issue of who has not done what. It's an issue of learning from what has happened so that we can prevent another death from occurring. And the only way we can do that, the only way we can learn is to be able to be honest with ourselves and be honest with the way we report the data and the way we tell people that this is as it is and then it can be addressed from there. So then under it comes. Every month, the labor ward team runs a mortality review to better understand the deaths of mothers and newborns in the hospital. This mother came. The first step would have been would have picked that this is a high-risk mother who should not have been left in the hands of a nurse. What, what do you think would have led to this fracture? What, what could have happened? What, what made it so difficult for the midwife to deliver this baby? Those other premature babies, or birth with babies, also died due to the asphyxia. So did you have that chance just checking on the files? If it was I strongly advocate for honesty and transparency, especially when dealing with, with data and, and cases that deal with, with patients, because it's an issue of life and death. Your word could kill somebody or your word could save someone, depending on how you put it. A wise woman delivers in the hospital. These are written by the family themselves. Either a man or a woman, upon hearing from the chief, the message that impressed them during the meeting or the message that they keep on lingering in their minds uh, upon listening from the chief's you know, messages, that's when they come and write the message on the wall to also pass it on to others. This is now the message which says men should get involved in safe motherhood programs. Now here it says all pregnant women should report to a hospital at the eighth month to wait for the delivery. These are very effective just because from time immemorial, most of these messages were just hanging along the M1 roads, were just hanging in the hospitals. We have managed to get all those messages now down to the communities and the people are responding quite well. Abigail is on her rounds again. She's visiting Margaret who's approaching her eighth month of pregnancy. Soon Margaret will leave Mpanje village for the nearest waiting home, 18 kilometers away. Mm. 
Margaret will spend a month at a maternal home like this one in the grounds of Salima Hospital. This way she is sure to deliver in the facility. The women here fend for themselves for weeks while they wait to deliver. In one of the poorest countries in the world, the government is battling to fulfill its pledge to build 150 new waiting homes across the country. We pass the message through women singing, dancing, uh, doing role plays and moving around the villages. There is power because for one person it was not possible for them to deliver the message and also be heard by the community. But because they gathered together as a group, they are able to communicate to the masses and they are able to be listened to. One of the challenge is the issue of mobility. So as Maikanda, we asked from our fellow donors to provide us with the bicycle ambulance. The main purpose of this is to transfer the pregnant women to go and await delivery. Before <laughs> Mm. 
what I love uh, about this work is the fact that people's lives in the communities are changing. There were so many problems. The fact that people have now started to change, it's a great motivation to me. Out there, there's a woman or a baby. A decision is going to save that baby or save that mother. And my biggest joy is just to be able to see a mother survive pregnancy and a baby cry out after birth. It is so refreshing and so rewarding. Because your action translates to life, your inaction translates to death. Uh, 